What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and in this video, we're gonna talk about 14 actual iPhone tricks that you probably did not even know existed. First up, how to find any photo in your camera roll in less than 30 seconds. Go to the search tab and start typing iPhone, and you will see a dropdown showing all of the different iPhone models. Select one of these, and it will show you all of the photos taken with that specific iPhone. You can even add additional parameters on top of that to filter results and find photos significantly faster than if you were to just scroll through your camera roll for five minutes looking for that photo from five years ago. You could also search for photos that have not even been saved in messages. So if you go into messages and search for whatever you want to see photos for that haven't been saved, you will see that there is now a new section at the bottom that says photos, and you can see all of the photos that match that criteria. You could also tap into that and you have the option to see photos or screenshots. If you have multiples, you can kind of filter that down even more and it will show that image and where it was in line in that text conversation. Now, what if I told you that there's a way to get cheaper subscription pricing for most applications in the App Store? And the reason for this is because a lot of applications are, we'll just call it smart in the way that they present their subscription models. They're gonna obviously put their most profitable ones out there and they're gonna make the ones that are cheaper significantly harder to find, if not you know, impossible to find on the app itself. So for example, I have Carrot Weather here and you will see that pretty much the only option here is $60 a year and when I first signed up you know the only thing I saw the cheapest one I saw was this one right here which was tier 3 for $30 per year now the key here is to have a free trial that way you're not actually paying anything up front so I do have a free trial and that allows me to go to a cheaper option within that free trial period if I would like to and that is the key so now once you have that free trial you're gonna go into your settings tap on your name up top go to subscriptions and then click on the application and from here you will see see all plans and from here you will see a much different story than what was portrayed or at least what you saw in the application itself so instead of going all the way up to tier three I could just do tier one for seven dollars a year instead of thirty dollars a year and you can see the big change in pricing right here this is going to give you every plan that is actually offered by the application even ones that they don't even want you to see if you want a quick and easy way to delete things off of your iPhone and clear up storage here is a better and more efficient way to do that if you go to your settings go to general go to iPhone storage this is where you will see a list of all of your items your applications your data taking up storage and they will be in order by most to least so you can see right here for example under F1 mobile if I wanted to delete that application all I need to do instead of tapping on that and going in here to delete or offload we can actually swipe over on that and you get the options to delete the application or offload the application and you can do that same swiping gesture pretty much anywhere throughout iOS including if you go into messages and then go to one of your documents under here like your top conversations photos videos gifts and stickers and simply swipe over on that and you can delete it without needing to go into that conversation and deleting it the long way now one of the coolest features in iOS 16 is the ability to remove the background from an image and that's pretty cool of course we can go into here and we can tap and hold on the subject of an image right here let's see if we can do this you can see and we can take it off and drag it like a sticker that is not really a hidden trick anymore it was at first but the trick I'm showing here is that you can actually do this with multiple images at once so if I select multiple images where there's a clear subject so we're going to select those we'll select this and we'll select one more image like this one right here we're going to tap on the share sheets we're going to go to save to files now open up the files application and now to select these four images the long way to do that is to tap on the three dots and then tap on select and then individually tap those but that takes too long a quick and easy way to do this is just take two fingers and swipe on like just do a swipe down gesture or just swipe with two fingers on one of the images and you'll see this menu right here where you can select multiples at a time like in a line like that or you could just select multiples without having to tap on the three dots up there in the top right but anyways once you have these four selected we're going to tap on the three dots in the bottom right and then down here you will see at the top we have remove background and we can actually do that with multiple images at one time so we're going to tap on remove background and we can also do a convert as well so you can see these are heic images we could actually duplicate and or not duplicate we could actually convert all of those images at the same time as well so we're going to do the same thing here 
tap on the three dots. And if we want to convert these into a PNG, a JPEG or an HEIF, we can do that. So we're going to tap on JPEG and we can convert all of them at the same time. Now, dark mode is cool, but I feel like we can have a better dark mode. And especially in the settings where you can see all of the gray background right here, I want to remove all of that. I want to have an actual dark mode. And to do that, we actually have to go into accessibility and then down here to display and text size, and then down to reduce white points. And from here, you you can turn this toggle all the way up to as high as you would like to. I would recommend not going anything above like 85%. I'm going to set mine to let's just say 72%. And now if we go back, you can see we have more of an actual dark mode where you cannot see the lines here in settings and it's just a more realistic dark mode. Now to access this quickly, we do have a shortcut to go to. So let's go back into our accessibility settings. We're going to go down to the bottom where it says accessibility shortcuts and we're going to look for reduce white point. Let's select reduce white point and we can deselect the ones that we don't want to be activated. So now now, if we triple tap on the side button right here, it will activate what we just set, which is going to be reduced white points. So it's three taps or three presses. And you can see that is the regular, the default dark mode that Apple gives us. And if I press three times right here, it will turn to the real dark mode. It kind of just makes the screen darker, but it also makes it look like a more dark mode, especially if you turn up the brightness, you can see you don't see the lines as easily here in settings. And it's more of just a better dark mode for your iPhone. All right, so here's a good one. You've probably been on a website before where you've been trapped, where you press on the back button, but it doesn't actually let you go back like to a Google search or to the previous web page you're not able to go back and so you have to close out of the tab and re-go into it from your history that's the long way to actually get out of a website trap all you have to do is tap and hold on the back button instead of pressing it let's tap and hold right here and then you can select the previous web page this way and that way it will take you out of that website for sure, like you won't have any issues with the website redirecting you because you're not actually pressing on the back button. You're activating like the quick history right here from your iOS device. If you have an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, you can actually hide and reshow live activities. So you can see here in the dynamic island, I have a live activity of my music playing right now. But if I wanted to hide that, all I have to do is swipe to the right and you can see it's gone. But if I swipe to the left, it comes back just like so. And you could do that for all live activities. And I find this to be beneficial when you have multiple live activities going at once. Like if I were to start screen recording right here, I would have multiple live activities as you could see up there at one time. But if I wanted only one to be in the middle, that's where I can swipe over. And then all of a sudden this live activity takes the spotlight and is in the main you know, section right there. And actually once you do that, you're not able to undo and bring the other one over. Now here's another really good one if you have an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, and that's how you can swipe up to unlock your phone without having to tap to wake it, which is an additional step, and this will save you time when unlocking your phone. So as you can see, I'm just gonna simply swipe up. You can see I didn't even have to tap on my phone. It's locked right here. Of course, I do have the always on display. That's how this you know feature works, but I'm not tapping the phone. I just simply swipe up and it unlocks my phone. And to enable this, all we need to do is go into our settings, go down to accessibility. We're gonna go to touch, and then right here you will see tap or swipe to wake. And this is enabled by default for good reason, because if you turn this off, off, you would not be able to tap on your screen to wake it, which some people that might actually be a pro. You might actually have a lot of butt dials and a lot of, you know, random things pressing your screen throughout the day. So you may want to turn that off. So that could be another trick for you there if you want to have that off. But for most people, I would recommend keeping that on. And if you have a 14 Pro or Pro Max, you're able to swipe up and unlock your phone without tapping first. Now, here's a pretty interesting one. If you game pretty seriously on your iPhone, there's actually a way to make your gameplay smoother. Now, I'm not talking about for something like Subway Surfers. I'm talking talking more for something like Call of Duty Mobile or something a little bit more intensive. And to do that, you're actually going to need to set your display zoom to be more zoomed in. And that's going to lower the resolution, which can help make your gaming smoother, especially on older devices. So if you go into your settings here and then go to display and brightness and then down to display zoom and you set this to larger text and then tap on done, use zoomed, you will notice that your screen will be zoomed in more. And like I said, it's not going to look good, of course, on your home screen, everything will be a little bit bigger. But once you go into a game, it will be more zoomed in and your resolution will be lower, which should, in theory, make your gaming smoother. Now, you probably already know that you can tell Siri to answer an incoming phone call. But did you know you can also have Siri hang up on somebody without ever even touching?
touching your device. So if you go to your settings, go to Siri and search, you will see a new option here that says call hang up. And if you tap on that, you can simply say the keyword, Hey Siri, hang up and it will actually hang up the phone call on whoever you are talking to. Now keep in mind that person on the other line will hear you say that. So be careful with that, but you now have an option to hang up on somebody via your voice. Now, if Siri hangs up on you or just doesn't let you finish talking, you can now change how long she waits for you to finish speaking. So if you go into your settings, go to accessibility, and then if you go down here to Siri, you will see an option that says Siri pause time. You can have it set to default, longer or longest. That way Siri will wait for you to finish speaking. Maybe if you speak a little bit slow, or if you don't always know exactly what you want to say to Siri, you can change that Siri pause time. Oh, and a little bonus in here as well. We also have spoken responses. You can now have prefer silent responses. That was also a new feature in iOS 16. Now the final trick is going to blow your minds, but first this one is going to be something that's a duplicate. I've talked about this before, but the reason I've included it in this list is because still so many people do not know that this exists and that is how to allow an emergency contact to bypass your silent mode. So all you need to do is go into a contact, go to your contacts app, and then go to a contact where you can see like their phone number, their email, their card right here. And then all you need to do is tap on edit, go to ringtone. And then at the very top up here, you will see emergency bypass. This is a section that hardly anybody ever goes to because it is deep within the contacts, but it's a very important toggle. And it says that emergency bypass allows sounds and vibrations from this person, even when the ring switch is set to silent or when a focus mode is on. Now, of course, focus modes have made it easier to allow certain contacts to get through, but this is kind of a fail safe method. Turn this on for all of your emergency contacts, like your parents, your loved ones. I would highly recommend going into their contact card and just turning this on. And the final iPhone trick is one that I cannot believe took me so long to learn, but this is in the notes application. So if you're like me and you create a lot of bullet points, and a lot of lists, you can actually use gestures to make a tiered list, like a kind of like a task within a task, kind of like a subtask. So it works for bullets and it also works for numbers. So what you do is if you type something right here, instead of tapping on return and then return again to get like a bullet point under it, you can actually use gestures. So for example, I'm going to type something here and I'm going to go down to the next bullet point and instead of tapping return again or you know sometimes it doesn't even let you you can see right there it just goes over and you have to do it you know another way but you can actually use a gesture here so if i swipe to the right you could see right there it will actually take me to you know kind of a tier under like a subtask and you could do that as many times as you would like to just kind of swipe over back or forwards on that bullet point right there. And like I mentioned, you can also do this for numbers as well. So if I type something right here for three and if I swipe over, it will put it under the number two right there. And of course I can keep on going with my list as such. You could also do it for these type of bullet points as well. I just find that it makes the whole kind of list making, bullet point making and notes so much easier and so much more intuitive. So there you have it. Those are 14 iPhone tricks that you probably did not know existed. Now, if you did know every single trick in this video, you are in the top 1% of iPhone users. So give yourself a pat on the back. But if you learned even one new thing from this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe for more iPhone tricks videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.